Hey, what's up everyone? My name's Alex, and today I'm going to be talking about a terminal emulator called RxVT Unicode, sometimes called OurXVT for short. Now, whilst I could probably talk about OurXVT for a good hour, this is only going to be an introduction. That being said, if there's a demand, I will gladly expand this series to cover more advanced topics. So let me know on Twitter or in the YouTube comments if you'd like to see more like this. All right, so first of all, let me answer the simple question. What is our XVT? Well, like I mentioned in my introduction, it's a terminal emulator, or if you prefer, a terminal window. Rather than explaining what a terminal window is, I'd much sooner show you, just because you've certainly encountered one before, you just might not have heard the fancy name. Inside of a virtual machine, I'm running Ubuntu 15.10 and I've installed a handful of popular terminal windows to show you. This here is a terminal window by the name of Gnome Terminal and it's probably the most popular terminal window. This is another terminal window called XFCE Terminal and this is yet another terminal window called Terminator. Each of these terminal windows have their own benefits and limitations but their fundamental purpose is the same to enable us, the users, to interact with a Unix shell. Now that we're all on the same page, allow me to introduce you to our XVT. Are you ready? Yeah, it doesn't look like much out of the box, but trust me, if you look past the aesthetics just for the next few minutes, you'll soon see that this terminal window can be configured to look superb. In fact, before I lose your attention completely, I'll quickly minimize VirtualBox to show you my custom RxVT instance. As you can see, despite looking regressive out of the box, it can be made to look just as good, if not better, than any terminal window out there. Bear in mind that this highlighting comes from a shell theme and is therefore not something you're going to learn how to do today. All I'm really trying to demonstrate at the moment is that RxVT fundamentally provides a window to a Unix shell just like its competitors. And yes, to a certain extent, they are competitors, which leads us quite nicely into a second question, which is what are the compelling reasons to use RxVT instead of one of the other terminal windows? Well, the most distinct benefit of RxVT is that by default, it is very minimal. It's so minimal, in fact, that by default, it doesn't even have a right-click menu, but don't let that deter you. Even though, by default, our XVT is very minimal, it has a solid plugin system and adopts what I would describe as a pay-to-play system, whereby you can optionally install plugins that provide new functionality in exchange for a bit of additional memory consumption. And I think this is one of the core principles behind our XVT. Those who don't want or need certain features don't have to bear their burden, and those who do can optionally install plugins to attain them. For example, our XVT doesn't have tabs by default. This is fine by me because I use a terminal multiplexer. However, if you desire tabs, you can install a plugin that brings tabs to our XVT. Whilst this minimalism does result in lower memory consumption, as someone using modern hardware, I don't personally find that improved memory consumption to be a benefit. What I do see to be beneficial is the ability to do away with cruft I never use and an ability to fully customize my terminal to suit my needs. Don't get me wrong, our XPT does use less memory than its competitors, which means that if you're using a low-end machine and you desire to open a lot of terminals simultaneously, you might appreciate our XVT's memory efficiency. It just so happens that I'm running a powerful machine and therefore can't tell the difference. Something else you might also appreciate is another feature of our XVT, which is that it can be demonized to run clients within a single process, which in turn minimizes the use of system resources and can potentially improve startup time for the terminal window. I'm not going to talk too much about this demonization today though. Aside from those things, our XVT does have some other niceties. You can configure almost everything and there are even some unique options out there, like an option to fade the terminal when it's inactive. Sometimes you'll read that the main reason to use our XVT is that it has Unicode support. 
In my opinion, supporting Unicode is part of RxVT's fascinating history, certainly, but in 2016, I don't really consider Unicode support to be a feature, it's more of a given. The same is true for supporting XFT font, which is something else you might see advertised when reading about RxVT. Usually, now would be a good time to teach you how to use the program, but honestly, due to the fact that RxVT is so bare by default, there isn't really much I can talk about until I first talk about how to configure the program, so I'll do that now. So, there are a couple of different ways to customize RxVT. The most popular way is to use a configuration file, so that's what we're going to be doing today. The first thing I want to configure is the terminal font, just because it's almost too small to read in a screencast. And it's because I'm making a screencast here that I'm actually going to change the RxVT fonts using GNOME Terminal. Once I've made the RxVT font bigger so you can see it more clearly in the screencast, I'll use RxVT from there on out, okay? Cool. All the configuration for RxVT happens within a dot file called .xresources. This file typically resides in your home directory. However, most Linux distributions don't come with that file already made. So you'll have to create it manually in most cases. So to do that, I'm going to open GNOME Terminal. I'm currently in my home directory, which means I simply need to write touch.x resources. Now bear in mind that if you're following along, you must copy the casing and the name exactly. That's a capital X and then lowercase resources. If you don't, the display server might not detect this configuration file. This configuration file is just a text file, which means you can edit it from within your editor of choice. If you are more familiar with graphical based editors, you can use something like Jedit on Ubuntu. So just type the name of the editor, Jedit, followed by the name of the file, X resources, and you can edit the configuration file in Jedit. However, my preferred editor is a terminal based editor called VI. So I'm going to write VI and then the name of the configuration file. Okay, so remember, my goal here is to change the font. Before I can do that, I'll first need to find out the font option name. One way I could do that is to close the eye and then enter the rxbt dash dash help command. This will print a list of all available options, including one for the fonts. But manually scanning through this list with your scroll bar is kind of tedious. It'd be much nicer to search it, which we can do using grep. Never mind the details of this pipeline for now, just know that this here is the search term and you can replace it with whatever you want to search for in the future. I searched for font and I did get what I was looking for. I got the option name, which is font. However, there's no real indication of what the font value should look like. It is for that reason that my habit is to go to the browser and look up the Arch wiki page on RxVT. On this page, you'll find not only the option name to change the font, but also some examples of what the actual values should look like. I want to use an XFT font called Monospace, so I'm going to copy this option here into my X resources file. To apply this change, close your editor and run the following command. Now, when you reload our XVT, the font should be updated. Like I said, now our XVT is easily legible on video. I can close GNOME Terminal because we're going to be using our XVT from here on out. The next thing I want to address is this gruesome looking scroll bar on the left hand side here. In my opinion, the best thing to do is just to disable it completely. Now, what I'm going to do is approach this problem as though I'm not familiar with RxVT. You see, there are so many RxVT options and combinations of those options, but I couldn't possibly cover every one of them, even if I wanted to. It is for this reason that knowing how to find the answers is important, and I'm hoping that my walking through the problem as though I'm a noob will help teach you how to find answers to your own questions going forward. So the first thing I'll do is search the help page for the word scroll to see if there are any applicable options. Hmm, okay, I can see a few options that might be applicable, but nothing really stands out as an option to disable the scroll bar. 
So what I'm going to do next is head over to the Arch Wiki again and search for scrolling options there. Here's a section on the scroll bar. All right, so right away, I can see a very beginner friendly description and an example as to how to disable the scroll bar. Perfect, I can copy this and then paste it into my X resources file. It would help if I opened the right terminal. Generally, you wouldn't have four terminals in your dock like that. Again, if I save the configuration file and then reload it using the XRDB command, and then subsequently reload X resources, you should see that that scroll bar has disappeared. And yes, it has. So in that case, I managed to find my answer quite quickly through firstly checking the help page and then going to the arch docs. In most cases, frankly, I would go straight to the arch docs. Something else I could have done is Google the problem, or I could have possibly referenced somebody else's X resources file. As you can see, if I head over to GitHub, specifically to my profile, I have a repository called dot files where I upload all of my Linux configuration files. One of those configuration files is the X resources file. I'm not the only person who does this, not even close. So what you might find is that if you're trying to accomplish something, you can't find any examples. You can look at somebody else's dot files and see examples as to how they are using particular options. One last thing I'll teach you in this screencast is how to set custom terminal colors. Generally speaking, the terminal window defines 16 or so colors. Then when a command wants to print colored text, it effectively looks up the color it wants to use according to the terminal window. An easy way to illustrate this is using XFCE terminal. If I open XFCE terminal and go to the preferences window, under the colors tab, in addition to the foreground, background, and cursor colors, there is a palette of 16 colors. If I run a command, like uh, list all the files in the root, you can see that the colors used by the ls command correspond to the colors defined under the palette. For example, here's a really caustic looking pink. If I change this to be a really caustic green, just to highlight the difference, you can see that it updates immediately. Similarly, this blue color is coming from the palette. What else do we have? We also have a sort of pale green here as a background color. If I change that to red and hit OK, we should see, perhaps it's the wrong green. Yeah, you can see that it actually updates there as well. So what's happening here is the ls command is looking at the colors according to the terminal window. Obviously, our XBT doesn't have a preferences window. However, it does have similar X resource color options that you can set. And that's what we're going to look at now. So if you want to define your own custom theme, what I recommend you do is head over to the same RxVT Unicode um, Arch Wiki page and look up the section on colors because what Arch provides, or rather what the Arch documentation provides, is a sort of template that you can use. As you can see, it's defining the background and foreground colors, as well as the palettes of 16 colors, each of which have associated with them what I believe to be X colors. However, what you can do if you like is replace these X colors with colors of a similar shade using hexadecimal notation to make it totally custom. The thing is, I suspect most people don't want to pick their own exact colors from the start and would much rather use a template. For those of you like me who would rather use a template, I think you've got two options. Option number one is to use somebody else's configuration. You can use mine if you like the way my terminal looks. In my dot files, if you go to X resources, you can see the same similar kind of template with the foreground and background colors and then the palette, but you can then copy and paste into your own X resources file. Like I mentioned previously, there are hundreds and hundreds of dot files out there. And if you want a way to sort of find them, I recommend this awesome community on Reddit called Unix Porn, whereby people not only post screenshots of their Linux desktops, but also their configuration files. So if you find somebody using an RxVT terminal that looks really cool, you can go and copy their configuration files. This is actually the option I'm going to use for this tutorial, just because it's nice and brief. So I'll open X resources and paste every single option that relates to color, even though some of them might not seem totally familiar at this time. Now, when I reload X resources and then reload our XVT, you can see that the terminal has been updated to have uh, different colors. And if I rerun the command I ran in XFCE, which lists all the files in the root directory, you can see that it has similar colors. 
What I mean by that is that all the names are blue and symlinks are cyan, the background here is green. It's all kind of consistent even if the shades are different. Another option you have is to use a tool like Base16 Builder. Now full disclaimer, this is a tool I'm working on myself, um, so it's a project of mine. The general idea is this, is that there are a handful of templates in this DB folder. One such template is for RxVT Unicode, there's a dark and light variant. You run this program and you supply to it the name of the template, which in this case will be one of the two RxVT templates, as well as a scheme. Schemes define colors. So you can see here there's a scheme called Brewer. Inside that file are 16 hexadecimal colors with corresponding annotations. You can run this program and it will generate for you a theme and you can just copy and paste it into your configuration file. I actually used this exact same tool to produce the theme that I use and upload it to my dot files. I just copy and pasted them from my dot files to save me from having to explain this tool too much because I want to make it a video dedicated to this tool in the future. If it's online, you'll be able to find it in the description. Again, you might be a bit concerned that I've skipped over some of these uh, settings or configuration names. There are just so many and it just doesn't make sense for me to explain every single one in detail. If you are curious about a particular property that I've copy and pasted, look it up in that help page on the Arch Wiki or Google it and you'll find a much more coherent description that I could, than I could provide in this screencast. Just before I finish up here, there's one last thing I want to cover because I think this is often a source for confusion to people who are new to RxVT and that is how to copy and paste text. A lot of the time people will select a portion of text and intuitively try and right click and copy it or even press Ctrl and C but within RxVT that doesn't work. To copy text you need to press Ctrl, Alt and C and then to paste text you want to press Shift and Insert. If you don't like these key bindings, then you can configure them via X resources. Myself, personally, I don't configure them because I use, like I mentioned earlier, a terminal multiplexer which affords me with its own uh, features to copy and paste text. So you won't find anything relating to that in my configuration file, but you can very easily find information on how to change the key bindings via search engines or potentially the Arch Wiki. As you can understand, I haven't really looked into it because I don't use it. All right, that's all I'm going to talk about today. Thank you very much for watching everyone. In this screencast, I tried to talk about what our XVC is, what its benefits are, and how to configure it. There are still things to talk about, like how to install and configure plugins. If you want to see screencasts about that, please let me know in the comments down below or on Twitter. I'm at Booker Codes. If you liked the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and sharing the video on social platforms. Again, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.